You're listening to the Major Pod Network, the only place where your favorite toy store, bar, arcade, and arena are all on the same block. Scratch that major itch. Welcome, everyone, to episode 13 of MC. True Long Island story. I am your host, always ready, Matt Cardona, the internet champion. And Mark, before you introduce yourself, you got yep. it? Oh, first, I'm going to drop it into that sold out major PBR koozie and then sold a out. little. Oh! Sniff it. Oh. I used to smell Bud Light Lime. Oh, yeah. Close my eyes and sniff it and just. It just reminded me like summer 2009. It always did, you know? I know exactly what you mean. You know, so Actually, I just close my eyes. Like, this is the life. If I smell whiskey, yeah. uh, all I think about is summer 2005 uh, playing rock band as a, as a pregame before we went downtown Springfield. It's oh. just like literally drinking like Coke and whiskeys, playing rock band. That was the life. But yeah. So the Bella Twins, they sniff, you know... They're wine kind of stores. We're we're PBR kind of stores. We're sniffing that. I got to tell you, the lime in there. I brought uh, <sighs> four cases of this stronger seltzer to the Blitzkrieg show pro show on Friday uh, for the boys after the matches. You didn't use the hashtag Major PBR though. I right? know I messed up. I took a you picture. You were drunk, huh? However, big hit, big hit among of the course. guys. How could they, they were not like, be? I didn't know Paps had a seltzer. I was like, it does. It's strong. It does now, baby. Yeah. Oh, also, I'm here, pro, uh, producer of the show, Mark Sterling Esquire. What's up, man? I got some cool follow up. Yeah. So, episode 13. Uh, before we get into follow up, let me just get a couple plugs out of the way. Sure. Um, this week, I did a autograph signing at MCW in Maryland. Mm. Um, and uh, they're, they're almost ready to start shows. This was kind of like a fan fest, like welcome back thing. And it was cool to meet, you know, so many. Broskies, you know, so many old school broskies, so many new school broskies. Uh, it was great. Like, yeah, like there was a mixture. There was people with the old orange foam fist. I was signing some OG uh, merchandise, and of course, like guys like Joe Vin were there. Uh, so that was really, really cool. Someone even had an old school internet championship. I love when I see those old school ones that people made. You know, because oh, yeah. they didn't sell those. Oh yeah. Um, but what I want to plug is that I did their podcast, MCW Cast. So it's a lot of like reminiscing and stuff like that. So if you like this show, you'll definitely like that podcast, which comes out this week. And um, also this week, uh, my my exclusive internet champion face mask. They're almost sold out on MattCardonaMerch.com. So get them soon. Uh, if they sell out this week, I will have a couple that I'm saving for upcoming events like Toy Hio and stuff like that. Mm. But just in stock this week, we'll go up on MattCardonaMerch.com this week. The Internet Championship keychain. And this is a huge baby. Oh, wow. I saw this. I said, I mean, this is big. This, yeah. is, a, <laughs> this is a big keychain. This is the that's biggest like, keychain I've ever seen. That's like for a pocketbook, not really for a pocket. So, But it's still cool. It's I think yeah. it's cool. You can maybe earrings. Maybe you can put in your ear. I don't yeah. know. Hell yeah. But check that out. Cool. Um, looks just like of, the internet title in the back. What's that? Looks like ju- exactly like the title behind you. That's exactly. It's the plate, baby. Yeah. And yeah. then also uh, Memorial Day weekend, me against EC3. Check it out. Freethenarrator.com. Um, it's going to be a fight. It's not going to be a wrestling match. It's going to be a fight. EC3. I have a lot of respect for the guy, but um, I'm going to kick his ass. And speaking of kicking ass, a lot of tweets this week about. Nick Gage. Mm. So, and he even kind of called me out on some high spots virtual signing thing. Oh, I didn't see that. I didn't see yeah. that. Yeah. So, for the record, I, I like Nick. I've never met him. I respect the hell out of him. Um, do I want to fight him? I mean, not particularly. You know what I'm saying? No, but yeah, yeah. this this kind of freedom that I have now, I hate the term free agent, but I am, right? Mm-hmm. And you know when I got released from WWE last year, I was using the 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 Christmas morning analogy, saying I saw these different figures or these different you know these these figures wrapped up, and they're like my opponents, and I get to open them up and wrestle and play with them. But like the the world was so weird, I didn't really get to do that, mm-hmm. you know. 
So I feel 100%. like now the world is opening up. So if the if the people want to see always ready Matt Cardona against Nick Gage, um, I mean the hashtag is true. Always ready, baby. All right. Well, yeah. That's comment below say. on this YouTube cho- uh, channel or reach out to us on Twitter. Uh, I would love to know what you guys think about that. I, I, we talked about it on the Major Wrestling Figure podcast, but his responses to you were so funny. I was, I was yeah. literally dying. It was a news segment on the Major Pod because it like <laughs> basically happened as we were recording last week. It was so funny. Right. Um, another plug I want to give is for the Patreon, the Major Wrestling Figure podcast Patreon. Of course, every week you can get this podcast early and ad free. And full disclosure, I'm going to Hawaii next week, so we're we're pre-recording uh, episode 14. So this week you'll get. Two, yeah. You know, so you'll get this one early. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you won't get this one early unless you're listening on Patreon. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you'll get next week's early as well. And uh, this Friday at 11:30 a.m. for Patreon members, uh, 12 noon, the FWF cards will go for sale. Mm. And if you're a fan, obviously you are of Z True Long Island story. There's a there's a Matt's dad card. Mm. There's a Chiapetta card. Right. There's a Big O card because they were all there at FWF Live, and those cards will drop 11:30 a.m. for Patreon members, noon Eastern, and just like Live Eight, I'm sure it's gonna sell out before noon. How many are there? So I believe we have 300 sets, but there won't be 300 sets for right. sale, right? Because I know I want some. Yep. You want some. Yeah. Brian wants some. I want to give a pack. To, um, I mean, maybe we should give a pack to everybody who was on the show. Right. That'd be a nice thing to do. Right. That's right. Like 20, so, that's 20 right there or whatever. Right. So yeah. maybe there's like 250 for sale. Yeah. Okay. So, and then maybe there's somebody we want to send to PSA. So I don't know. Right. Yeah. Good idea. So I would say between 200 and 300. All right. I that. mean, those cards look great. And if you're into that kind of thing, it would definitely be the Chiapetta and Matt's dad rookie cards, right? And probably the Big O. Uh, maybe you could have one out. The NYWC maybe made cards. Who knows? Anybody know of a Big O it's card possible. out there? <laughs> Who knows? It's possible. All right. Some some cool. Uh, so listen, the best way I think I've been getting really great feedback um, is the YouTube comments on this. I love the YouTube show. comments. It's great. So I have two big things, and they're from the same guy, Clover G. Okay, he says, Mark. The reason why Matt would show up on Superstars, even though it was taped before SmackDown, was because they would tape Superstars before Raw and SmackDown. For this episode, the May 5th, 2011 edition, two matches were taped before Raw, Beth Phoenix versus Melina and Zack Ryder versus Evan Bourne. Then before SmackDown, they taped the other match, Jay Uso, ver- Jay Uso versus Trent Beretta. So they would just, I guess, say that that Superstars was from the SmackDown arena officially even though it was from ah the two i see arenas. so that now we sense. know so now we know and i know for a fact sometimes they did mix and match but the way you were explaining like eh, it doesn't seem right right because it said to me that it happened in this t- this town so right i'm like right. okay and, um, and one one i i talked about this also on another plug for the patreon i did a little bonus q a which i will do every once in a while oh yeah yeah that's and okay. i talked about this in the the q a like one of i don't have regrets in wrestling but if i had one it would be that i didn't document and record and by record i mean write down every match i ever had how easy would it have been to take a notebook and write Matt Cardona or Brett Matthews or Zach Ryder or Brett Major against so and so in this building, whatever win, lose or draw. How easy would that have been? Yeah, I know. And that's that's unfortunate that I didn't do that because there's no way to go back. And I honestly don't. I don't trust you know these internet things. I'm sure right. it's like 95 percent right. Yep, 100%. but it's yeah. not. It's not 100 percent complete. And then you could have wrote little details like broke my nose. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Shitty match. <laughs> <laughs> Banger. Whatever. All right, and then Clover G writes, I looked up the promo Matt had against Sheamus on the WWE Peacock Network, and I typed it out for you. You ready? Oh, my, oh my God. <laughs> Sheamus, bro, I appreciate the offer, but you just made the biggest mistake of your life. Everyone all over the world knows that they're looking at the next WWE champion. Woo, woo, woo. You know it. <laughs> so like see that's so generic like what else could i have said that made vince want me to redo it i don't right. know well i guess we'll never know <laughs> yeah right i guess we'll never know Maybe unless somebody... john space carlo can find the original footage and yes. like under the table send it to me <laughs> right yeah 
I thought that was neat. Um, but that's all I have for follow up. What do you got? Anything? I don't have much follow up. Uh, so I guess it's time for the Broski of the week. Let's do it. The Broski of the week. All right, the Broski of the week. All you got to do is leave a review. Leave it wherever, iTunes, wherever you can leave a review. I don't care. I don't care what platform you use to get this podcast. Leave a review, screenshot the review, then go to Twitter, at the Matt Cardona, find my pinned tweet, quote tweet it, and in that quote tweet, put that picture, that proof, and use the hashtag broski of the week. If you do that, if I pick you, you will get the broski of the week headband available at mattcardonamerch.com. Beautiful. You will get the signed 8x10 available at mattcardonamerch.com. And you will get the Broski of the Week sticker exclusive to the Broski of the Week. Love that. So, the Broski of the Week this week. Let me pull this. I'm going to have a little sipski. I'll have a little sipski. A little cheers. A little mm. virtual cheers. There we go. Mm. All right. It is from at Mike underscore Morand. Mm -hmm. 2011 was not one of my finest years as I was going through a divorce. One thing I always look forward to was ZTLIS. Mm. Matt is very entertaining, as we all know. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, he had showed me a little typo here, so I'm just reading it as it's written. Yeah, right, <laughs> he right. had showed me was to know your worth. So with his inspiration, I dug myself out of the funk I was in. And just like Matt climbing the ladder at WrestleMania, I climbed the corporate ladder of my retail job. After five years of upper management and what I thought with my career job, I realized it wasn't what I wanted to do with my life. Once again, I bet on myself just as Brosky did and changed my career path. I couldn't be happier. As entertaining as the show is, if you look deep as I do, Matt really shows you by his example to know what your worth is and to bet on yourself. Thanks, bro, Mike Moran. Well, that's the whole point of this show, Mike, is to, to inspire just at least one person to, to bet on themselves and take a chance. Uh, yeah, we're talking about wrestling. We're talking about, I don't even want to say the glory days because my best days are yet to come. But um, that's what I want to do here is inspire somebody to, to, to bet on themselves and take a chance and, and take a risk, you know, mm -hmm. because... Guess what? It might not pay off, but why, you know, 10, 20, 30 years down the line, always question, like, what if? I think, so, it might not pay off. If you work hard enough, it may not get you to the exact goal that you were talking about, but you may fall off somewhere and be totally happy with where you are. You know what I'm saying? Oh, 100%, like, yeah. Look, this didn't get you to the WWE Championship, but it got you a lot. Uh, on the way, you know what I'm saying? And right. So that's how things happen. Work really hard. Maybe you don't become the president of the United States, but <laughs> maybe you're a congressman or whatever. Right. So keep working hard. Um, and I just thought of something, man. You know what? This Clover G guy helps in two ways. First, he finds out that debacle that I couldn't figure out. Then okay. he goes and types up this promo, types it up. So for the first time ever, on the MC True Long Island story, I am giving Clover G the Produsky of the week. Oh my, the Produsky of the week. <laughs> and maybe we'll get some stickers and oh maybe man. I'll send well, you gotta, some. You, we're not using the company card on that. That's not your personal account, yeah, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Produsky of the week. Clover G, thank you very much. Wow. Uh, all right. Uh, before we get into some of the stuff this week, let's hear a little word from our sponsors. Major Pod Network has a new tag team partner, Paps Blue Ribbon. Everybody needs some liquid courage to make their own weekly purchases. Scratch that figure itch and scratch that PBR itch. Get your PBR beer, get your PBR hard coffee, and get your PBR stronger seltzer. 8%? If you're listening to this, you're already a major mark. Now it's time to become a major PBR mark. Use the hashtag Major PBR and post your pictures and videos of you major marking out. Paps Blue Ribbon and the Major Pod Network, the new tag team champions of the world. Of the world! But we're definitely not getting any new figures from Mattel. And we're back! 
Okay. Tweets. Matt Cardona. Anyone have a clear screen cap, not video, of me fist pumping with Cena on Raw? Ooh, you know it, Broski. So we'll talk about that later, but you're trying to help get you need the fans to help you out. Matt Cardona, May 12, 2011. In Mexico, the internet in my hotel is so slow, and I'm having <laughs> trouble uploading episode 13. I'm trying to solve the problemo. This was a problem, not just this particular time, but a lot overseas. Yeah. If the hotel internet sucked and i have to be like in the uh at the shows using the productions like wi-fi and just hoping it would go through right. such a pain in the butt especially like the next year when it has to be in by a certain time oh true um there was one overseas tour uh in the in year two where i finally upload it i'm like filming it all tour and we're on the bus and uh the security uh like a security guard comes up to me. Like I'm in the back of the bus. Mm. She's like a phone with her. She's like Triple H is on the phone. He wants to talk to you. <laughs> I'm like, what? So like everyone's like, Ooh. <laughs> you know, everyone sees this going down. <laughs> right, right. So I have to go to the front of the bus and talk to Triple H. And it was this episode. Uh, I did a skit. It never aired. So I wonder when it gets to that time, we can play it. Yeah. I was do- it was like National High Five Day. So you know what I do? I always take topical things and I spin them, right, to make yeah. them my own. So I, I do the fist pump thing, you know, the fist bump, you know, the, the bump, the bump, the bump. Yeah, yeah. And I was saying that that would be called the bro job. <laughs> so I went around asking people for a bro job, you know, various people. <laughs> Obviously, it's a skit. And luckily, like, Cena's involved, yeah. right? So, but uh, Triple H told me, like, yeah. He wasn't mad. He didn't. He, it didn't come off like angry. Yeah. He was cool about it. He said, "You know, uh, I'm paraphrasing. Like, I know this is weird coming from the guy who used to say suck it, but mm. we can't say bro job." Um, and he he gave me the heads up as opposed to sometimes they would just flat out edit things out of the show. I did appreciate the heads up. Okay. So, so we'll get to this, that. We'll okay. get to that we'll later. Talk, but that was yeah. a, an overseas editing uh, thing that just popped up in yeah. my head. Yeah. All right, um, May 12th. I now have over 100,000 followers. Not bad for a broski who's hardly ever on Raw. And, <laughs> and then on top of that, I have more Twitter followers than Hulk Hogan. <laughs> broski is greater than brother. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you know what I did? I meant to check. I wonder if you have more followers now still. No, I doubt it. Let's see. Hulk Hogan. 2.2 million. I think no, it's the got same more amount. Oh, what what do you have? I think I have like 2.1. Oh, uh, hold on. Let's see. Uh 2.1. Oh, come yeah. on. So close, brother. <laughs> All right, and then final one, May 6th. Uh the airport security broskies were not impressed. Oh no. The airport security broskies broskies were impressed with my internet championship. Yeah. <laughs> so they liked it. It's funny um, because I traveled this week to MCW, and of course, I brought the new internet title. And then they look and, at uh, it. And I always love and hate when it gets pulled out security. I hate it because I'm like, oh, let me yeah. just go through. Yeah. But I love it when they pull it out and they're like, oh, champion, huh? You know. What, what did they think about it this week? I mean, they didn't say that, but you could tell they take it out of the little bag, either yeah. looking at examining it. You know, <laughs> such a I weird thing special. to have in your belt. Yeah, uh, bag. Okay, here's here's the big part here. Uh, well, let's just get this over with. So on Raw, Miz is still feuding with Cena. Uh, they're having a match at Over the Limit, which is coming up. Um, Swagger is like with Michael Cole versus Jerry Lawler in this feud. Vicky and Dolph uh, Ziggler are together. That's that's what's going on. It's so 2011. But you have a hell of a week. Now, you, you really didn't wrestle much in April. Very limited. Okay. Um, maybe four matches the entire month after WrestleMania. But here we go. You put the sh- last week's show up on the 5th. You then fly out uh, for a house show in the Dothan Civic Center in Dothan, Alabama, and Percy Watson defeats Zack Ryder. The next day in uh, Ma- Mason, Georgia. Macon. Macon, Georgia. <laughs> Chris Masters defeats Zack Ryder. The next day, Sunday night, 5-8-11, uh, in Greenville, South Carolina, Chris Masters defeats Zack Ryder. 
And then on the 5, 9, 11 superstars, and we talked about this early on, Zack Ryder defeats Vladimir Kozlov in 4 minutes and 58 seconds uh, at the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. And you are helped by Kurt Hawkins. So, okay. There must be a reason why I don't talk about it this episode. So I feel like superstars at this time must air either on Thursday nights or on Fridays, so I don't spoil it. Yeah, Superstars 100% airs on on the night you put out your show. Right, so I don't want to spoil it. But, however, if you pause the video at the very, very last second, there's a black and white photo of me and Hawkins as tag team champions, like a little teaser. Oh, yeah, that's cool. uh, I, I know, like... Towards the end, I start doing little Easter eggs. And while I was watching this this video, I was like, oh, I wonder if I started doing those Easter eggs yet. I'm like, damn, I didn't even check the previous episodes. And what do you know? This week has one, like the very, very last second. Uh, it. It's me and Hawkins. What's it called when you take a photo? Not like, it's not black and white. It's like inverse or something. I don't know, where it looks all weird and warped. Yeah, it yeah, kinda, yeah. It kind of looks black and white, but it's a little, for a split second, if you were still watching. Got it. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I remember that day. It was me versus Vladimir Kozlov. Brian Hawkins just got traded back or traded to Raw. Yeah. And it was a meaningless Superstars match. And I remember we were pitching. And I'm sure, can we get Brian on after this to kind of, you know, mm-hmm. give his version of the story? Hopefully it kind of mm-hmm. backs up what I'm saying. Yep. Um, I remember we went to Ed Kosky, who was the main writer of Raw. Like, can, can he just like come out and help me? Because like, I believe... At this point, Santino is teaming with Kozlov. Um, like maybe he can come out and help me win. And like at the very last second, I think he said, like, yeah, go just go do it, whatever. Like nobody cares, right? Right. Wow. Uh, and I will say, Vladimir Kozlov took one hell of a bump on that Rough Rider. Oh, yeah. One hell of oh, a yeah. bump. You can if you literally it's there's a couple you different YouTube videos of this, and you can find at least the end of the match, but there's the whole match is on YouTube as well. So um, pretty interesting, and I guess right now we'll hear what Brian remembers about that. What's up, everybody? It's uh, Brian Myers, the most professional wrestler, once known as WWE Superstar Kurt Hawkins, and I've been asked to chime in on this week's MC episode. Um, so I have a lot of memories. Um, they're they're very scattered, so bear with me about this time period. Um, obviously, Matt. And I've been friends a long time, and he had a show, um, and I, you know, I was a day one viewer, day one on board with it, and I think, and it's come up a lot on the show, you know, obviously, like, the boys and his friends, you know, in particular, were rooting for him and on board and, you know, keeping up with it way before, you know, the office or decision makers at WWE were, for sure. So, at this time period in my career... Um, I really, I really, I don't know. I had nothing really going on at this point. I, I randomly got drafted to raw and was literally doing nothing. And I want to say this was my pitch or something, or I, I definitely had a lot, uh, to do with it, but it was really just trying to like latch on to something. And Matt, I felt like Matt was definitely like ascending, but, but I knew it, but not, maybe not the office so much at this point. So that's probably how it got push through um but i uh yeah so i pitched for the the one we i mean i don't even know how this happened to be honest with you i i definitely asked like hey can we do some kind of something i mean we're both heels on raw basically doing nothing so and we're former tag team champions and have a history i I thought it only made sense that we did something so what i remember is we did the the first week is um it's him and Kozlov, and then I kind of run in as a surprise and help him win, and then we're celebrating, going crazy. And this is all on Superstars, which is like the equivalent of, you know, modern-day WWE main events. So it was all very under the radar, but it happened. Then the following week, um, we have the tag match, which is us against Santino and Kozlov. And it's just a regular, like, two-seg match, and we lose... But it went really well, and it was, like, fun. And then the really weird thing about it, and I don't even know if Matt remembers this, but he might. 
like that was in I want to say Dallas that tag match and Mark's going to fact check this and whatever but it's in Dallas we do it it's like whatever the first match of the night most likely and then you know we're walking to the back and like we're getting chased down by somebody like wanting to talk to us and we're like what the heck and we kind of do like a double take and it was Shawn Michaels and he was there if my memory serves me correctly there was like a dark segment in between superstars and raw that night where Sean and Hunter did their full like DX entrance and routine and they made the crowd cheer like we want WrestleMania because I think the Cowboys had just built that ginormous new stadium and they wanted to have a WrestleMania there long before it actually happened and uh they were they're politicking if you will to, to make that happen for WWE so Shawn Michaels is randomly there for that reason and then he chased us down and like I guess he was in Gorilla waiting to do that that's that little promo and he uh he watched the match like actually intently which he, he I, don't know, I can't think of any other time he ever <laughs> watched me wrestle or cared and he ran us down and he had like all this advice about the match and he was he was very complimentary too i remember he i take like this big uh tackle from kozlov and then like on one bump i bounce and shoot my legs over like i do like a full rotation and shoot my legs over the bottom rope and spill to the floor he's like hey kid i invented that bump you're stealing my shit like kind of kidding but also like compliment to me which i thought was cool and obviously like you know matt and i had very very few uh interactions with sean even though we like basically worshiped him as kids uh, he just did, he wasn't very approachable <laughs> in his time you know on the road and stuff so the, the, that's why i remember this so much on top of the you know the high of like oh this is cool they're gonna give matt and i a chance to to at least tag again or something and then lastly, I remember I showed up the next week and I was like, oh, cool. Like, what are Matt and I doing this week? And they were like, oh, no, that you guys aren't back together. That was just that was just nothing. It was it was on Superstars. It basically didn't happen. And you have a singles with Chris Masters on Superstars this week. And I was just like Homer Simpson into the bush. But that's that's how it goes. OK, we're going to have Brian on. Uh, maybe for a full episode at some point. We we almost did it recently, but we'll have him on. He can talk about his uh, thoughts on this whole show very soon. Yeah, and and I think next week we wrestle uh, Vladimir Kozlov and Santino. Yep, and then that's it. It's over. Like that's it. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Like I'm pretty damn sure that is it. Um, but also, like, what happened? Did Primo get traded? The the, the whole time with Primo, it's just so odd because mm. like we're teaming. Then sometimes we wrestle each other. Sometimes mm-hmm. we wrestle each other on live events. Sometimes there's like eight man, ten man tags, and we're on opposite teams. It mm-hmm. just didn't make sense. Right. Uh, you could tell that WWE did not care about DZP. They were not down with Zach and Primo. <laughs> right. Okay. Now here's when it gets wild. Um, <clears throat> so, like I said, that was the superstars. It was recorded in Nashville on the Monday night. Um, and then 5, 10, 11, so Tuesday night, Percy Watson defeats Zack Ryder at a house show at the Bank of Kentucky Center in Highland Heights, Kentucky. That's a weird, a weird Tuesday night house show. And then 5, 11, 11, Percy Watson defeats Zack Ryder in Mexico. So then we went to Mexico for a little Mexico loop. Centro um, de Usos Multiplace in Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico. Uh, I believe I worked Percy for the majority, if not the whole loop. Yes. Uh, I loved working Percy. It was weird because at that time, um, obviously, like, I'm not doing anything on TV, but the company trusts me enough. We're like, I'm kind of like the thumbs up, thumbs down guy on the live events, whether I'm wrestling Percy Watson uh, or uh, Mason Ryan. I, I mean, basically, like a who's who. I did all their live events before they get called up. Now, some guys don't get called up, you know. Uh, Bray Wyatt did all his stuff. Dean Ambrose did all his stuff. Bo Dallas did all his stuff. Uh, Adam Rosen, who's Leo Kruger. Corey Graves. uh, Connor the Ascension. Like, pretty much almost everybody who was coming up from FCW NXT at that time, like, would work me on the live events for at least a month before. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And Percy Rusev, have- Rusev's another guy. I always, I always joke with Rusev. Uh, when you get into the Hall of Fame, you better, you know, Mention credit it. me for giving you the thumbs up. <laughs> and 
And Percy Watson never he did the NXT stuff, but then he can't ended up coming up as an announcer, right? Yeah. So he he was doing the NXT stuff. And it was such like a, a mind fuck for him because he was so over with that almost like Steve Urkel character. Yeah, but right. then they were like taking it away from him. But they right. still wanted him to be entertaining, but not that. Uh, and then I don't know if he got released or what happened, but eventually he does come back as the announcer. Super great guy, super talented. Yeah. Um, it's just unfortunate, you know, not everybody is going to make it from developmental, quote unquote, to the main roster it's just it's just not gonna happen right but i mean super talented guy uh always jacked always right. you know i thought it was super entertaining as well so just yeah. unfortunate i you know when you say the steve urkel thing i don't even know what you're talking about so yeah, watch the original so i guess it's nxt2 i believe right um where i'm 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 a, I'm a pro to titus o'neill I don't recall who his pro is, but he's doing like a like a Steve Urkel, maybe maybe like Nutty Professor is like a better word or better Sounds term. Great. I'm like intrigued. With the glasses, I, nerdy, yeah. and he's all jacked up. Right. Uh, like, oh yeah, he would say. Maybe it's more like Nutty Professor Eddie Murphy. Got it. Um, I like it. Yeah, it was great. Um, but yeah, so you wrestle him. Uh, then like whatever. That's the Wednesday and the Thursday in Guadalajara, and then. Uh, the next day, five thirteen eleven, same thing. And then you actually, this will be next week. But then the five fourteen eleven. But it's wild to me that you do these raws that you leave on Friday. You do the house show loop, the TVs, um, and then you fly directly to Mexico. Yeah, well, those you, those overseas or international. Remember, I said Mexico was overseas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those international loops are, I would say, nine times out of ten, it's like. Bookended by live events, TV, that tour, TV. You know, so it's like a, it's always long. It's how, it's a it's a long trip. This may be a horrible question, but how do you pack for that? What like what do you do? Uh, usually, I would try to find like halfway through. I would try to find uh, an arena that had a washer dryer in it, like an <laughs> industrial washer and dryer for like the rags. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And just and I would just try laundry. to do laundry halfway through. Right, right. And the, yeah, would you bring multiple gear sets, multiple boots, or just like you're just rolling with this one set? Oh, I would never just bring one set of gear ever. Okay. Like ever. No, even on like a even on like a regular house show loop. Ah, one pair of gear. You know who taught me like always have different gear like every night? Chavo Guerrero. Really? I always thought that was like he's a true pros pro. Like, you know, he's always got the different gear. Like even for live events, treating live events like TV. But like you have a live event in one town on Friday and another town on Saturday, no one's going to know that you had the same gear. Right. But like, okay. So sometimes I would do that, but I, I would always like to switch it. Like I would never wear like gear from like a Friday through raw. Like, ugh, like no way. Okay. All right. You know, I can see oh, the I different gear on raw, but whatever. All right. I would like to spice it up. And especially later, this is going to sound crazy, but with like social media and stuff like that. So like, if I'm if I want to post a picture every day and I want the match to look different, or at least I want to know what where was this match, I want to wear different gear so I know it's a different night. And it's okay. not, you know, if I'm that does makes that make total sense, to, sense to me. Yes. Right. Yes. That makes total sense. Right. The social media aspect alone would would sort of make me want to do that. And also, like, you know, these loops, the match is always it always gets better. It always gets better. You know, sure. you do one. Whether it's great or the shits, it gets better each night, you know, which mm -hmm. I really I, I miss that. And that's an element that is missing from wrestling, obviously, due to this pandemic. But if wrestling, you know, if WWE, AEW, if they don't bring back live events, that's where guys get their reps in, you know, on these live events. So it's going to be very interesting because like wrestling once a week. How, that that's just not enough, I don't think. Especially if for like a newer guy, you need those reps. Like not only for your wind. Like I need I need to be wrestling to be in ring shape. You can do all the cardio in the world. It is not the same as wrestling. I don't care what rower or treadmill or stepper or sprints, whatever. It is not the same as wrestling a match. No, oh, hundred percent. I had my no first way. real match. In a year on Friday, and I was a balloon to smithereens. 
Uh, and I do hundreds of burpees, so it, it doesn't even matter. You got you got to do the real wrestling. Um, okay. Anyways, episode thirteen. Let's get to it. Uh, first of all, your birthday's coming up. When's your birthday? May fourteenth. May fourteenth. Happy birthday, man! So I'm on this loop. Yes, you wrestle Primo. I mean, I'm sorry, you wrestle uh, Percy Watson on your birthday. Yeah, so I remember this loop. I remember, uh, where were we? Can you tell me where we were on May 14th? Uh, that, that is not on my list, but I can look it up if you want to s- start your story. It doesn't say, it's not in Mexico? It, oh, it's definitely in Mexico. But it doesn't say where? Uh, it does, but I have to look it up. I remember um, they brought me like a cake. Okay. Like... They like there was a cake for me like at the show, and we all went out. Uh, I say went out. When I say go out, a lot of the times it's the boys and the girls just partying at the hotel. You know. All right, I got it. Arena Monterey in Monterey, Nuevo yes. Leon, Mexico. Yes. So they got a cake for me, saying the happy birthday, which Who's was they? awesome. Who's they? The building people. What's that? The, the, the wrestlers. Double- I don't know who organized it. Oh. I I nice. want to say I want to say like. This is the tour where Arn Anderson, like we catch him in the locker room laying down on a couch and he's got like a laptop like on his belly, just like watching this show. Not maybe not this particular one, but trying to understand. And I don't think he understood, but he understood that I was trying. He understood I was going the extra mile. And that's when Arn and I really bonded was during this tour and during this YouTube thing because he knew. You know, he always liked me, but he mm. knew that, okay, this, this kid's hungry. Right. Uh, and I'll never forget the sight of him on a couch, <laughs> like, with the, the laptop on his belly. He probably asked me. It's probably my laptop. Yeah. And he's watching the show. <laughs> and I always hate watching something I think is funny or good with and, somebody. And, like, are they laughing? Are they smiling? Oh, are they reacting? God. I have to leave the room. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you but, mean. But uh, anyway, so my birthday, uh, whoever got me the cake, thank you. And then we went out, but it was like a weird area of the hotel where there was like a pool. And I just remember we were all drinking. We were playing music. And for some reason, Big Show took me and he threw me into the pool with my clothes on on my birthday. Oh, man. Come on. (laughs) No, but it was like all in good fun. Yeah, yeah. It was all in good fun. Uh, That was a a hell of a tour. That was a great. That that was a great tour. Did you guys party on these Mexican tours? What's that? Would you guys like party and stuff like on the other nights? Or is it like this is just too much work? Uh, it really depends on the schedule. Like if you have to wake up and get an early flight. But even then, like th- this, these are definitely like party tours as opposed to, uh, you know, a typical live event loop. You're driving yourself. You got it, you know. This is like you either get bust every. This is the, like this is how you you should be treated. They pay for your hotels. They got catering a couple of di- uh, times a day, uh, you know. So they're taking care of you. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about oh, if I'm too drunk. Well, I don't have to drive. <laughs> I can just get on a flight or sleep on a bus. You yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, wow, well, it's funny because I didn't even remember Big Show throwing me in the pool until you you mentioned it was my birthday, and now I remember. Uh, it's funny because I believe that's the same building where years prior Undertaker does the head snap when me and Hawkins are on the phone during oh, the in during the Kozlov yeah. during the Kozlov uh, Triple H big main event. I okay. believe it's the same building. <laughs> oh damn! All right. Yeah. Um, okay, so episode um, thirteen, you open up in your hotel room in Mexico. Obviously, you didn't have any time. You you were not home to normally film the show, so you're. In your hotel room, you say "hola" instead of saying "hello," and you have "hola." Some... Why do you say "hola"? I, I don't know. I'm <laughs> bad accent. Sorry. But I have the sombrero. Yeah, where the heck do you get a sombrero? Just like you I went must out... have got it uh, either at an airport or at the souvenir store at the. Is that what's called souvenir gift shop at sure. the hotel? Yeah. Okay. Why not? And I put the headband on it. You know. Right. I liked it. Um, now you tell a story. I want you to tell this story. You tell this story about going to Waffle House with Primo and Carlito. Waffle House is one of my go-tos on the road for right. so many reasons. Have we talked about this? Because it's a, it's it's an interesting reason, uh, reasoning. Okay. It's always open. Right. A. B, it's hardly ever like has a weight. Mm. 
very little does have weight. And sometimes if I'm by myself, like sometimes I like to arrive by myself. If, if there are no tables, I can sit at the counter. You know, there's always like, you always get into a Waffle House. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I feel like it is the most consistent with the food. And I also like that I can watch and almost direct the chef okay. as I'm sitting there, you know, oh, no oil, no oil, please. I said no oil. <laughs> you know, I can watch. Huh. It makes me feel a lot more comfortable. Rumor has it, and I've never witnessed this, that Chris Benoit, when he'd travel and go to Waffle House, he would carry his own, like, you know, like Pam spray. So he knew it wouldn't be like disgusting oil. And oh, he would wow. hand it to the, the chef. Okay. I always wanted to do that. I never did. <laughs> uh, crazy. Genius idea. Yeah. Genius. Yeah. But I'd always order, you know, egg whites. Uh, if I was cheating, I'd get like the Fiesta omelet. But typically egg whites, like eight egg whites. And it's never the same amount of eggs. It's never, <laughs> it's never the same amount of eggs. And it's never the same price. Right. It's never, ever. Uh, so I, my typical order would be the eight egg whites, uh, chicken breast. Sometimes I get some over easy eggs on the side, uh, with the hash browns with some onions and tomatoes and stuff like that. I I just love, and I'd get them steamed, steamed hash browns. So like people think like, Oh, Waffle House gross, dirty. You can eat very, very healthy there and it's relatively cheap. Mm. Um, and, and you know, I'd usually eat there a couple times a day because I, I would love to eat breakfast there and then. Not dinner, but that, that 1 or 2 p.m. Sorry, 1 or 2 a.m. stop. Instead of like getting like McDonald's. Bleh, right. Like, and don't get me wrong. Like there were times when I do that and do like the no bun, which is like such a stupid, doesn't even make sense. You're still eating this disgusting meat, whether there's no bun or not. Right. You know, yeah, but some, yeah. listen, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Yep. But I would always like Gals and Anderson hate that I'm a sit down guy. I'm a sit because I I need like real meals. Yeah. Like you 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 were with me a couple weeks ago. Right. I was flipping out. You guys were eating like fast. I'm like, I can't eat this because <laughs> right. listen, yeah. I will if it's an absolute necessity. You know, mm. I would I would rather eat that over nothing, over like beef jerky from a gas station. Mm-hmm. But if I have to add 45 minutes to my trip to eat a healthy meal, I'll do it. Right. Anyway. So wait to the eggs. <laughs> I was thinking about this. We've talked about this before. That the you never get the right style eggs. I think I f- figured it out. Here's why, uh, and I know this because I worked in a restaurant for three years. I was a breakfast cook. Sometimes you order these eggs, and they come. You know, you, the restaurant's stocked. You get these huge crates of eggs. Sometimes they're like extra large eggs. Sometimes right. they're small eggs. So when you say eight egg whites, the guy's doing eight egg whites. Yeah, but. Listen, I worked at a deli myself, Cow's yeah. Corner. I'm an expert. Right. right. There is a way to crack an egg and get the most of that egg white. Oh, you think people people are being a little lazy with that egg white? That people are a little <laughs> lazy with that egg white. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Absolutely. There's it. a way to do it. There's a way to do it. Anyway. All right. You, Dolph Ziggler, and Primo are in. So uh, this particular time, the, the waitress recognizes <laughs> Primo as Carlito's brother. Right. She literally right. says, you're Carlito's brother. And recognizes Dolph Ziggler as yeah. Zack Ryder and doesn't recognize me. <laughs> so you say, hey, do you know who I am? And she goes, no. Yeah. So then we go to the car. <laughs> and of course, I have the internet strap. Right. And the headband. And we take, or we, Ziggler takes a picture, like doing the LI with this lady. And I insert it into this video. Can we put it here, the, the picture? Oh, it's, it's there. Yeah. Hell yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm so good at editing now. I can do the little, the camera sound, you know? Right. 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 <laughs> Very proud of myself for that one. Right. That's great. But it's a funny story. I loved, you know, adding real life situations um, to the show. Then you say <clears throat> um, we have over one million views on the on the channel already, and that's because, pretty pretty impressive, right? Oh, uh, yeah, unreal. Uh, one million views on the channel already because all the marks love him, and he's just like all the marks. So then you say, "I'm like Mark Henry. I'm like Mark Paul Gosler. I'm Mark Mark Paul Gosler. I'm like, Mark Zuckerberg. I, yeah, yeah, Mark Henry. Yeah. Mark Anthony. Mark Hamill. Right. Mark Paul Gosler. But I had like funny ways, like you know, um, I prince, I kiss Princess Leia. It was yeah, like Mark, Mark Hamill. Hamill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my friends call me Zach, like Mark Paul Gosler. Right. Uh, it was just another way to add the internet slang lingo into the show, and I do it again um, later on. But the marks. you know. The marks, like yeah. the getting over, climbing the fence, when yeah. Big O pushed me, getting a push, the yeah. marks. Uh, and it was, and like I, I was able to add these pictures in, so it just made it, and I had been mark capitalized, you know? Right. Uh, 
So yeah, cute little thing. One of those uh, little cute little thing. <laughs> I, I I half smiled. Um, <laughs> all right. That here's the cool one. On Raw that week, you fist pump with John Cena. What's your memory of that? So this would be Cena. He, he you know the typical walk to the ring. Mm-hmm. You know that he has like, and right, John Cena's next. You know, mm-hmm. John Cena has you know carte blanche or whatever he wants to do. Mm-hmm. No one's gonna tell him no. Yes. So he's like, all right, during my walk, Zach will be there. We'll do a little fist pump, and I'll keep walking, and that's it. <laughs> because you're kind of like friends now. Yeah. But and also, like, he's smart because you're you, you're getting the internet fans to like you. So if you like him, yeah. But he's he's giving me the ultimate rub. Oh, of course. You know, and I think I asked for a still photo. I think by this time I realized I can't use the videos. I don't know if something happened. Maybe something happened where maybe when you used Vince's video the the week before. I have to look through some emails and remind me to do that at one of these weeks was well, a couple of weeks, but I know for a fact that one of them, my show gets taken down because of the videos. Mm, you probably would have tweeted about that and I see all your tweets. So maybe it's coming up. Yeah. I feel like there's a reason I asked for the picture. Um, or maybe I was told no videos. I don't recall exactly. I'll try to look through some emails, but before that little skit, uh, I talk about the Ryder Revolution. Now, I don't know if I came up with that or the fans came up with that or if WWE came up with that, but that's the first time I think I say it on the show, Ryder Uh-oh. Revolution. Okay. And uh, we show a bunch of signs. Which there's now so many signs from our good friend, WWE's biggest fan, who was on the show last week. Great interview, by the way. Right. Check that out. And at this point, he is painstakingly watching Raw, SmackDown, whatever, and getting the signs, and I'm putting them in the show, which in turn makes fans want to make signs to be on the show. Right. So it, so the whole half the arena is Zack Ryder fans at this point just because they want to get on this internet show. I wouldn't say that, but it's... I, I skipped that. I forgot that. And and one sign I did notice, I looked at all of them, and you're seeing it right now if you're watching on YouTube, um, one of them says, I'm the reigning broski of the week. So I can only assume it was our man that we talked to last week. Um, because he said he traveled to all the Ross, yeah, so he true. probably went to the next Raw and got himself yeah. on again. Um, okay, that's the Cena thing. So now you talk about your birthday this weekend, um, and everyone from home, since you're away, sent in birthday videos. So Scott, like, like, balloons and stuff. I I don't know where I got those. Maybe I must have brought those from home. Blew them up. I must have brought them from home because I don't think the gift shop. In the Mexico hotel would have that. So I I, I recall this I, that I asked. First of all, my dad's cell phone footage. How grainy is that? Is oh that a Nokia? God. Is that a Razor? <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Terrible. And of course, he says happy birthday to John by accident. Morrison. Yeah. Uh, Big O is there, and Scott Stanford. First of all, Scott's now. This is this is where Stanford starts taking some liberties. We're like you said, I, Broski. I I knew it. You probably said, "Sing happy birthday." So right. He just cuts a promo. <laughs> right. 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 Exactly. <laughs> I want him, my dad, and Big O to sing happy birthday, and I'll cut it together, which I do. But of course, Scott needs to get himself over and mm. cut a little impromptu promo, which was fine. It was funny. He had uh, a Justin Bieber cardboard cutout, the same one I had. He had like a Tri County Flea Market airbrushed uh, Justin Bieber hat. It was fine. But it was a little aggravating. To me, only because I knew he has another segment in the show. Hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Ah, okay. Trouble in Paradise. We got to have that. Uh, he's got to be the first guest, I think. He's got. I think he, so. He's got to come on. Uh, first, big O, big uh, by the way, I've been talking to him. We're trying to squash the beef. Yeah. And maybe we'll do it on an episode of MC. Okay. I'm in. So, um, I got a, I got up, a great though. Big O story I want to br- bring up to him. It's been, <laughs> it's been 10 years. And and we could probably play the footage. It's a fr- friggin' insane. I know exactly what you're talking about. Thing. It's really funny. So we'll talk about it on the show. I think I brought it up on on the major pub before, but um, um, all right. So this is very important. Yes, the broski of the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, before I say what it is, after I tell the fans, hey, if you want to be broski of the week, go to my Twitter, submit. Like that's very important. I need to let people know every single time. I can't expect that people are gonna watch from the beginning when they hear about Z trolling on story. So I have to explain everything every single time. And that's smart. Uh, right. Like really smart. You do the same thing at the end of the show every week. Yeah. Reminding people because it takes people a bunch of times to get it. And you still do that to this day. We we go through the same um good housekeeping every you major have pod. To, though. Yeah, you I think it's smart. 
you it's can't great assume marketing. you can't assume that people know everything about you. And the same goes for wrestling, whether it be on the independents or WWE. You can't assume that everyone knows, you know, what your shtick is or what promo you cut into a cell phone and put on YouTube. I agree. I agree. So anyway, this is a very important Broski of the Week. It's a, I guess it's a co Broski of the Week. Luke and Dwayne. Yes. And they're playing the acoustic Just Take Care, Spike Your Hair, which becomes the theme to Z Trolling on Story, the theme, that close theme to this show. And it all starts with this video that they submitted. And um, next week, we're going to have them on and we're going to talk. We're going to, you know, because these are some guys I want to sit down and, and chat with because they're an integral part of the show. And that song is an integral part of the show. So much so that when we put out this initial trailer and, you know, the uh, the video trailer that there were people, I mean, myself included, who said they got goosebumps just hearing the song. Yep. So. Uh, yeah. So we can talk about the story and the history of that song next week, but they sang it in front of a crappy camera, you know, raw, kind of live on uh, this episode. Obviously, we get better versions of it, but we'll talk in depth with them next week. But it was a really cool. It kind of took me off guard because it certainly gets better <laughs> as they professionally right. recorded it later. Right. Way better. Um, so next up is another this is one an of those. Timer. What's that? This is an all-timer, I think. An all-timer? Yeah. In, in what way? In This is a great, I think, people remember this segment i think okay when people so talk this about- is one of those getting over like we were just talking about the push yeah this is the i can draw money yes and i'm sitting there with my crayola crayons you can even see the easter egg of ziggler and peter bankman in the background i brought <laughs> them all the way to mexico yep saw that. brought them all the way to mexico with me and i'm what am i drawing what i'm putting the finishing touches on it i show it it's me just <laughs> drawing money. money i can draw money <laughs> great so, picture you're seeing it right now it's pretty funny. Yeah, at this point, obviously, I'm I'm really, you know, grasping for any last insider term I could think of. Right. Yeah. But like, it's it's there. It's right there. Well, draw for money, me, this was one money. of those ones that I remembered fondly. Yeah. I I looked forward to these segments every week because they were like poking the bear, poking the bear sure. segments. Um, not being so. bitter, not complaining. No, it was you know? funny. No, it's, it's great. Funny. You're part. You're we're one of us. You know. You're saying the word, and I say that because at this time I was a fan, and you know I'm saying the same stuff. So right. Uh, okay, we get that that Stanford segment that you're talking about. Um, he uh, is doing Broski in a bottle. It's a commercial for Broski in the bottle. I'm wondering from the, from the makers of the Invisible Jump Rope. Right. Is was this a five hour energy with with a different labeling? It uh, like I believe. I don't know if I made it or Stanford made the actual bottle. I feel like I did, uh, but this is a pure Scott set. Take a, I'm going to take a little swig of this PBR. This is a pure Scott Stanford segment. Wrote it, bro. Directed it. He's great. Above he's and beyond, so, he he's making these rhymes in this. He's like, so talented. That's yeah. why, like, it was hard to get angry with him because he would like knock it out of the park with this stuff. <laughs> So uh, he had like the body suit. I let him borrow one of my shirts and headbands. He got the wig. He he was it was such a great segment. I just come in at the end, a little cameo of my own show. Uh, but when he came to me with these segments, I would I, honestly like nine times out of ten, I'd be like, oh man, another one of these. But then they'd be so good. But the majority of them, I really really enjoyed it. I still think they hold up. Oh yeah, he's great, and he delivers it with such confidence. Obviously, he's like an announcer and a TV person. So, and I, I admire Scott so much because he was somebody who you know wasn't complaining about the spot he was in, but would do anything he could to get to that next level, and he still does to this day. Hmm. You know, always, always chasing, chasing that dream. Take a shot. I wonder, and I can't wait to ask him this. I wonder if he got some heat ski for being such a big part of the show. <sighs> I. I want to say no because I don't think anybody watched of like importance. <laughs> I'm serious. Well, you just said Triple H told you. Well, you that was a this. different story because once I moved it to their channel, or once I was okay later, <laughs> quote on, unquote, yeah. forced to move it, there were people who watched it, and I'm sure it got to like, well, can we air this? Well, S's person. Well, can we air this? Well, S's person. And eventually, it got to him. You know, okay. I can only assume. Yeah, he wasn't sitting there watching episode fifty to one hundred every week. No way, right. you know. 
it must have went through a couple of people until it got to him. Got it. All right, then you sign off, um, and then the only thing I noted at the end was you uh, throw your glasses and it knocks the camera over. Did you mean to do that? Yeah, so I think last week or the week before, I I add the throwing the glasses part. Okay. It becomes a little signature. And I also noticed, and I don't know if I just noticed it on this one, but a little slower a slower cadence when I say, like me on Facebook. Yes. It, I noticed that this one, I don't think you had him in the other one. Follow me on. I think that's where it really starts. That's classic, yeah. Right. Where yeah. It, and that becomes signature. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, that that's really the take care, spike your hair. And then, like I said, at the end, the very, very end, if you, like, you really need to, even when I was watching it back, you need to pause like five seconds before it ends and keep pressing play, pause, play, pause. Because like if you do it at the end, it will go to the next video automatically, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a That's split cool. second picture of, of me and Brian uh, with those tag team titles. Were you excited about the possibility of you guys being together? I was excited because I was going to make the most of it. It's not what I necessarily wanted. But I was like, whatever they like, listen, I would, me and Primo were doing whatever we could as, as me and Primo to make it work. So if they were going to put me with Hawkins and make us do something, I would have done that. Whatever, whatever they gave me, I was going to make work. We'll talk about this in a couple months. I don't think many people know this, but I was supposed to, <laughs> if not lead, be in the new Nexus. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yes, so I have somewhere like the first draft of like the show, you know, like they put out, like what they, you know, the writers who pass to the producers and it's in the production meeting, yeah. And then it becomes CM Punk. I believe this is after Punk. Okay, 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 okay. So I guess it's like the new, 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 I think that's what it was, it's like the woo, woo, woo Nexus or new, new, something like that. Oh my God. So that's, I'm like- (laughs) <laughs> and it starts one week, and then it ends. But nobody ever told me this. I like thought it, but I wasn't sure. And then, like years later, I was emailed like the uh, the whatever the production sheet. The you know, my the god, wow, yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. All right, let's uh, go hear a little word from our sponsors before we wind down. Okay, you got your are, are you serious, bro? Yeah, hit the jingle, Marky. Are you serious, bro? All right, every week, tweet me. Use the hashtag are you serious, bro? It could be anything. Video, picture, just words, something to pop me. And if I pick it, you will get the 8x10. This one, these little quote tweet. Our good friend Dwayne, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. He posted a picture of him at the gym. Getting all zapped, right? Uh, yeah. With his new Project Rock Under Armour collection. And he's wearing like a cut off, like broski cut hooded sweatshirt. Yeah. So the major world order, I believe it's Billy Peck who controls it, says yeah. The Rock gets to wear a hoodie with a broski cut to the gym, but I'm Chelsea Green, won't let at the Matt Cardona. Are you serious, bro? <laughs> Which is true right. because the major pod network hoodie available on collar and elbow. Um, I cut it broski cut style, and she would not let me wear it to the gym. I got one wear of it at an impact taping when she wasn't there, obviously. Yeah. And then I tried to wear it in, like, my civilian life. Yeah. And she said, no way, Jose. <laughs> Next time I see you, um, I'm going to bring one of those. I think I'm going to ha- ha- make you cut it for me because I would like to make one of those a broski cut that I can yeah. wear while I'm working out. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, hashtag know your bro. Yeah, it's real simple. Uh, tweet us using the hashtag Know Your Bro. Ask a question for like the upcoming episode. I won't read these, and Mark will pick one and surprise me with it. And we will send you an eight by ten. But however, in the Fink voice, I think it's the guy from last week or maybe the week before. The guy wasn't following me or you, so we couldn't DM him to get the prize. So. Right. Sorry about your damn luck. Yeah, you, you guys got to follow uh, me or Broski or both. <laughs> follow us. <laughs> one follow us one of, at least. At, Mark at least me. It's my goddamn yeah. show. Yeah. 
All right, Trevor Duncanson at Trevor Duncanson. Um, this is not really for this week, but I think it's a good time to ask this question. And you don't have to get insane into it because I know that there's stories later on that are very important. But as the viewers grew, did YouTube ever reach out about monetizing your content? Love the old and new show. Keep it up. Know your bro. So the monetization, we talked about it. You were like, I'm not even going to do it. But did anybody approach you? I mean, this show is getting 100,000 views first week. That's a lot for back then. I don't recall YouTube reaching out for this. Um, I did consciously from the very beginning not monetize it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want WWE to think I was trying to make money off of them. Yep. Because I wasn't. I was trying to make money for them, make money for me. Yep. I wasn't trying to make money on the side uh, doing this show. Uh, so I turned off the monetization on purpose. Uh, eventually, even to this day, any ad, whatever, it all goes to WWE, and I get it. Zack Ryder is WWE IP, IP meaning intellectual property. Right. So anything that I or anybody else comes up with under WWE contract using that WWE IP, it automatically becomes theirs. So in the next contract that I sign, I believe I signed one at the end of 2011. Funny story about that. We'll, we'll get there when we get there. Right. But like it has like a list at the end of all the things that WWE owns, whether it be, you know, Major Brothers, Brett Major. But now it's like, bro, like everything that I said or could have possibly said as Zack Ryder on this YouTube show is there. So it says like all episodes of YouTube show Z Trolling Island Story, um, Long Island Ice Z, Long Island Loudmouth. I never called myself the Long Island Loudmouth. Uh, <laughs> Rough Riders, like if I would have called my fans Rough Riders, which I never did. Uh, all what about this, like you know, the Big O? No, because they can't. It's not theirs. I guess. He's in the show. He's a character um, in the show. Now, I don't know if any of this holds up in court. You know what? Remind me for next episode because that list is on every contract going forward so I can read that list. Okay. It's That's some cool. ridiculous things. Like, and it gets even crazier like later on. Like They, they add not the hype bros, but the hype brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so Mojo, if you're listening, if you want to do a little run in the Indies, we cannot be the hype brothers. <laughs> But you could be the hype bros? But I guess we could be the hype bros. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, but yeah, so then eventually WWE takes it over um, and all the money goes to them, which is fine. I get it. I'm not complaining. But it was a good, this was all a good learning experience because when we start the major wrestling figure podcast, I know about intellectual property. I know what happened to me before. I know, now full disclosure, Brian and I, Pitch to WWE. We want whatever we were going to call it. The Zach and Kurt Wrestling Figure Podcast. WWE didn't see anything in collectibles, which is fine. I mean, now they have an A&E show about collectibles. Fine. They didn't see anything in podcasts. They now have... Well, I mean, do they even have a podcast network anymore? I don't know. Sort of. But they tried. Yeah. They tried. Uh, but it was a blessing in disguise that they turned us down. Because then, thanks to a little birdie, we just did it. Uh the major wrestling for podcast, Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, WWE didn't own anything. And we were very careful. We didn't hide the show, but we tiptoed around certain things, especially like our likeness on merchandise. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we were released, we had that to fall back on. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was the Zack and Kurt wrestling for the show, it'd be gone, automatically right. gone. Yeah. Um, so fortunately, you know, I kind of learned from not my mistakes. And I, I, I answered a question similar to this, on the the bonus episode on Patreon, like someone said something to the effect of, "If you could go back, would you do this as Matt Cardona?" The answer is A. I wouldn't have been able to because back then, listen, everyone knows the deal. Wrestling is entertainment, but nobody was putting their real names on social media now. Mm. Like nobody was. It, no, they just weren't doing that. And also, the goal was, I want Zack Ryder to be popular. Right. I want. I want them to love Zack Ryder. So that was the whole point. And the point the point wasn't to make money on ads. The point was to make money by selling merch, being on pay-per-views, being a champion, being on all the shows. Uh, you know, and eventually I did, right? But that the point wasn't to make 
you know, and you can make good money on YouTube, hundred percent. People make a living off of YouTube. That wasn't the goal. The goal wasn't to have a YouTube show. The goal was to be a WWE superstar. And I and I got like a small taste of what it's like to be a top top superstar. Whether it be like you know um, a folder, like so. I collect my own merch, right? I collect like one of everything. Yeah. So I during this run. Well, I guess like a couple months later when things really start picking up, like I get like s- slippers, uh, Santa hats, ridiculous things. But one of the coolest things, in my opinion, was that I went to a Kmart one day, a Kmart, and they had like a back to school folder. On the folder is me, CM Punk, and John Cena. <laughs> you know, so like there's no denying that I got pretty close to where I wanted to be Yeah, at one point. 100%. You know? and it, and that's all because of the fans. It's all because of this show. No no one was sitting around in Stanford being like, you know, this Zack Ryder guy, we really want to use him. We just can't think of anything. That wasn't happening, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Not everybody is going to, and not even, not everyone's going to be the chosen one, but they're not going to have something for everybody. It's just not possible. Right. It's not possible. Like, imagine, like, playing figures with your fig fed. Not everyone's going to be in a storyline. It's just not, it's not possible. Right. But the fans, because of the show, supported me and demanded I be on the show. So without the fans, without this whole process, you know, I wouldn't have gotten the taste that I got. I wouldn't have gotten, and I, I honestly believe I wouldn't be where I am today. Oh, yeah. We certainly wouldn't be having this show. Right. Right? But I wouldn't have lasted so long in WWE. I wouldn't have had this career if it wasn't for this show, and this show wouldn't have been possible without the fans. And <laughs> when you when you really think about it, and this is just my rough estimate, my rough estimate. Two years of Z True Long and Story, 200,000 views per episode. Uh, my guess is somewhere around a hundred to $150,000 would, be, would have been the, the monetization from YouTube. But would you have paid that for that? You know what I'm saying? Like, you, if you were like, hey, man, you have to pay $150,000 to to get this run, you probably would have done it, you know? So, like, you're oh, not... T- uh, yeah, that, you can't put a price on the right. experience, the good right. and the bad. Right, so... The good and the bad, you know? I and, mean, maybe and, you're talking $6 million or something in monetization, but we're not even... That, well, I mean, we'll, we'll get into that year two when WWE, I know for a fact, signs a $5 million YouTube deal, and right. the only thing I get from WWE is a laptop that's not even brand new. And a shitty Sony handheld camera. <laughs> right. But right. it is what it is. Yeah. I wouldn't trade it for the world, the good and the bad. Right. I loved it. It was a great experience. Could I have done some things differently? 100%. I don't like living in regret. So mm-hmm. what's the point of doing that? Uh, I'm very happy with you know, where, where I am now. And I wouldn't be where I am now without where I've been. All right, characters debuted none. You're in Mexico. Uh, this episode clocks in 246,973 views at five minutes and 22 seconds. Um, nice little episode. Uh, interesting that you did it on the road. Um, pretty cool. So um, one thing I wanted to show you, man, I got this this week. Uh, I'm that very chair? excited about this. What? The chair? No, I'm, gonna, I'm, oh. I'm about to roll over and get it right now. Okay. Uh, this is kind of for the Major Wrestling Figure podcast, but it it fits here. But I'm okay. excited to show you. I had to get this. I'm the producer of the MC True Lion and Story, so I needed this figure. You do. I got the Elite. Uh, what is this? Elite Seventeen. Yeah. Elite Seventeen. Zack Ryder with the Internet Championship, the headband. Uh, on card. I'm gonna get you to sign it. That that really puts a smile on my face, and we'll we'll get there. But I'll tell the story now, real fast. You know, I wasn't allowed. We'll get into full detail about it, but I wasn't allowed to wear the internet title on television. I tried. I certainly tried. Yep. But I believe it's was it THQ at that time. The Game Marks podcast would probably kill so me mad. if I'm saying they're the wrong. Who's so mad right now? Uh, I believe it's THQ. They put the title in the game. Yep. Mattel, I have to like write a letter, or the, I'm sorry, I have to respond to a letter and give my approval for them to use the internet title. Now, certain things like the YouTube logos change, obviously, Twitter, Facebook. Yeah, no logo. But it's it's my title. Like that, that is like up there with one of like the proudest, you know, moments of my career, seeing that happen, seeing that come out. 
And when people say like the internet title's not real, f- off, it's real. <laughs> it's right here. It's real, baby. All right, that's cool. And we'll talk more about that actual title once you get the real one made. Hell yeah. Uh, coming up. ProWrestlingTees.com slash uh, Major WF Pod for all of our shirts. Today, I'm wearing this. Uh, it was a limited of 100 um, for our 100th episode. And I wore that today specifically because I think we have a limited one going on right now, right? By this point, if you listen on Patreon, you might be able to get it. But if you're listening by regular Thursday, it's 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 off. Okay. And what um, shirt is it? What's that? It's the Major what? Pod Network shirt. Me, Major you, Network, Brian. Yeah. Uh, designed by TTD, who we love. Um, a lot of cool stuff on Major WF Pods, Pro Wrestling Tea Store. Also, of course, there's the... What, what's your Pro Wrestling Tea Store? Uh, S- Smart Mark Sterling. Pro Wrestling and Pro Wrestling Tees.com slash Matt Cardona. You can get this hat. Broski of the Week shirt. A lot of Broski stuff. And then, of course, Matt Cardona Merch.com. Uh, I do want to say... I have put some old school WWWYKI sunglasses up there. Mm-hmm. Um, when there was this this like giant like it was almost like all right, Zach Ryder's done going on a business sale. They put these sunglasses on the site for a ridiculously low price, and I bought every single one. <laughs> what, what do you think is ridiculously low price? Like three like, bucks? I want to say they're like three bucks. Oh wow! So okay. like, and I Hell just yeah. had to have my parents. Uh, ship them to me because they were in like giant boxes and I brought one down when I moved from New York to Florida and I totally forgot I left two more at my parents house so the last time I was there and I was looking around the attic I'm like, oh my god I gotta, I gotta get these things so listen I'll put them up cheap I'll sign them I'll sign them as Zack Ryder it's a cool little thing uh, and then also the Zack Ryder retro figures which is kind of like the gear I was wearing in this era I have a bunch of those signed on mattcardonamerch.com. So check those out as well as the other merch. Perfect. Yeah. All right. I think that's it for me this week. Um, take us away. And then we're well, going to have a cool interview next week. Um, this PBR, this lime is just so damn good, right? Oh, Love my it. God. Mm. Um, like me on Facebook and every week I say it. Yeah. Help us out. And people, people are trying. They're coming to me. Yeah. But they're like sending me this link, like I never found it. Like how to combine? Like guys, I know. I need a human being, someone who works for Facebook, to like get in the system. I'm sure it takes ten seconds. I just need them to manually do it and approve it. So yeah. like me on Facebook, uh, follow me on Twitter. I guess follow me on Instagram. Uh, buy the merch on MattCardonaMerch.com, ProWrestlingTees.com slash MattCardona. Follow the Major Wrestling Fair podcast. Listen, scratch that figure, Rich. Hashtag Major PBR. Drink a little PBR. And take care. Spike your hair. Just.